in this video i explain friction in a nozzle and nozzle efficiency for finding out this nozzle efficiency we are required these two parameters one is the isentropic heat drop and second one is the actual heat drop so first we understand about the friction in nozzles and we draw this molier diagram for the friction in nozzles and by using this diagram we also derive the equation of nozzle efficiency means these two parameters are related with the each other means if we know the friction in nozzles then we can easily understand the nozzle efficiency now first we understand the friction in a nozzle so we already know that in a nozzle we supply the steam at the inlet of the nozzle the pressure of the steam is higher and this pressure energy is converted into the velocity means it is converted into the kinetic energy means when the steam flow through a nozzle the final velocity of steam for a given pressure drop is reduced due to the following reasons okay so there is a three reasons are there first reason is the friction between the nozzle surface and steam means between the surface of the nozzle and steam some friction are done and due to frictions the outlet or a final velocity of the steam is slightly reduced second the internal friction of steam itself and the third one is the shock losses okay so these are the various three reasons that reduce the final velocity of steams and we are focused only on the first parameters that is the frictions between nozzle surface and steam the effect of friction on steam flow through a nozzle is represented on the molier diagram means we represent this friction losses on the molier diagram as shown in this figure means later on we discuss with the animation the diagram can be completed as discussed below so here you see this is the hs diagram means h means enthalpy so enthalpy on the y axis on the x axis entropy is there and entropy is denoted as the s and in this hs diagram is also called as the molier diagram okay and in the molier diagram this is a one curve is there it is called as the saturation curve and in this molier diagram other line is also there that is the constant pressure line constant temperature lines okay so first of all we need to look at the point 1 for the initial condition of the steam so we know that we supply the steam to the nozzle okay so this initial condition means inlet condition is called as the condition 1 okay so how we putting this point number 1 on this hs diagram for putting this point number 1 on the hs diagram we at least required the two parameters okay so it is a point where the superheated steam temperature line meets the initial pressure line p1 so here you see this is a constant pressure line is drawn on this molier diagram like this way okay so it is called as the pressure lines and this is the saturation curve means suppose it is a dry and saturated steam then we are require only the one pressure line means if you notice pressure suppose here this pressure is 20 bar so we follow the 20 bar pressure line and the saturation curve is meet it is a point number 1 but when the steam is superheated at that time we also require to the temperature line or a value of the temperatures okay so at that time we need to meet the pressure line and temperature line means temperature line and pressure line is intersect at that time it is called as the point number or means suppose pressure is 20 bar temperature is 500 degrees centigrade so these two lines are meet at that point we put the point number 1 and at this point number 1 we can read this value of enthalpy it is called as the h1 on this y axis second point now draw a vertical line through point number 1 to meet the final pressure p2 line okay so we know that in the nozzle the pressure is drop so when this pressure is drop we need to moving in the downward directions okay so we need to draw this vertical line into the downward directions so where this vertical line is end so this vertical line is end at this p2 line or a final pressure so we know that suppose this uh, nozzle is inlet at the 10 bar pressure and it reduced to the 2 bar okay so we need to draw this vertical line up to this 2 bar pressure line so here 2 bar line is provided okay so we draw this vertical line from this point number 1 up to this 2 bar means this vertical line and this pressure line is intersect it is given this is point number 2 
and here we take these projections of the point 1 and point 2 on the x axis it is given the same answer that is called as the s1 is equal to s2 means it is called as the isentropic heat drop or a isentropic process so this is done as the float through the nozzle is isentropic why it is called isentropic isentropic means entropy remains constant and we can also read on this diagram that's the s1 and s2 are same so which is expressed by a vertical line 1 to 2 and this heat drop h1 minus h2 is known as the isentropic heat drop so here we take the projection of the point number 2 on the y axis it is the h2 point now when we do the subtractions of this h1 minus h2 it is called as the isentropic heat drop means h1 minus h2 is isentropic heat drop and is equal to c2 square minus c1 square by 2 so this thing we can understand in the last video that is the velocity of a steam flowing through the nozzles okay so by doing this energy balance we derive this equation and from this equation we derive this equation of the c2 okay now third point due to friction in the nozzle the actual heat drop in the steam will be less than h1 minus h2 means due to frictions the heat drop is less than h1 minus h2 means this line is the shorter actual line is the shorter than the idle line or isentropic line so this is called as the idle line or isentropic lines so let this heat drop is h1 minus h2 dash instance of h1 minus h2 so we need to draw this cow line why we need to draw this cow line this is the actual line and this actual line is come due to this friction so due to this friction this heat drop is reduced and this is the point number 2 dash and we take this projection of the 2 dash on the y axis it is the h2 dash is given and this h1 minus h2 dash is called as the actual heat drop and actual heat drop is equal to h1 minus h2 dash is equal to c2 dash square minus c1 square divided by 2 means these similar equations are there instance of the 2 we can return the 2 dash okay so here you see this isentropic heat drops and actual heat drops now if you understand these things then you can easily understand the efficiencies of the nozzle now before moving on the nozzle efficiency we understand other two parameters as the expansion of the steam is n at the pressure 2 so here you see that the expansion of the steam is n at this pressure p2 so this is the constant pressure line is there okay and this is the p1 line is there okay therefore final condition of steam is obtained by drawing a horizontal line through h2 dash so we draw this horizontal line and we get this value of h uh, enthalpy that is the h2 dash to meet the final pressure p2 line at the 2 dash next point now the actual expansion of a steam in the nozzle is expressed by the cow 1 to 2 dash instance of 1 to 2 line so here you already see we draw one vertical line that is a 1 to 2 it is the isentropic line and this cow line that is a 1 to 2 dash it is called as the actual expansion lines and the actual heat drop is h1 minus h2 dash it is known as the useful heat drop or we can also say it is the actual heat drops okay so when we nozzle is followed isentropic process at that time they do we need to draw the vertical line when we consider the friction we draw this cow line okay this isentropic line is called as the isentropic heat drop this cow line is called as the actual heat drops okay now we understand the nozzle efficiency now before moving on this nozzle efficiency i request to like the video and subscribe my channels for watching more video related to power plant engineering and other subject of this mechanical engineering for power plant engineering various link is provided in descriptions as well as in car for other subject i request to visit this playlist so we know that efficiency is equal to the output upon input okay and value of the efficiency is always less than the hundred percent okay but here we are not mentioned is efficiency in the form of output upon input because we know that in the nozzle the input is coming as the pressure energy and it is converted into the kinetic energy okay but here these efficiencies are some form of the heat drop okay so nozzle efficiency is defined as the ratio of useful heat drop to the isentropic heat drop so if you are 
feeling difficult to remember this definition then simple logic thing is there okay this uh, nozzle efficiency is denoted by this symbol that is the useful heat drop upon isentropic heat drops useful heat drop means actual heat drop actual heat drop is h1 minus h2 dash divided by h1 minus h2 okay so we know that the efficiency is always less than 100 percent so simple logic is that the smaller land suppose we take the land of this one and two point and one and two dash point okay so shorter land is the one to two dash okay so we need to mention this point on the upper side means on the denominators and in the denominators sorry on the so from this line what we understand in the numerators we need to mention the shorter line that is the h1 minus h2 days and in the denominators we need to mention the longest line longest line is the h1 minus h2 days okay means suppose here this value of h1 is 500 value of h2 is the 100 and value of h2 dash is 200 okay so what is this different the longest line difference is 400 and shorter line difference is the 300 so it is a 300 divided by 400 okay so then we get this efficiency is less than 100 percent suppose you do the opposite thing means you mention the wrong things then your efficiency is increased greater than 100 percent means you mention the wrong definitions okay and this h1 minus h2 dash is also written as the c2 square minus c1 square by 2 okay and here this h1 minus h2 dash is also written as c2 square minus c1 square by 2 so this 2 2 is cancelled from both parameters and we can mention these equations now if we consider c1 is small compared to the c2 then the nozzle efficiency is given by means we consider c1 is small so this c1 value is zero then we get this simple equation this nozzle efficiency is the c2 dash square divided by c2 square and it is also written as the kn square so what is the meaning of kn kn means the velocity coefficient for the nozzle and the velocity coefficient kn is equal to c2 dash square divided by c2 squares okay so here we complete this nozzle efficiency if you learn something then like the video and subscribe my channels for watching the more video and don't forget to share with your friends.